everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment below. Before you know it, I've got the Cavazzo brothers with me today. And first, we're going to talk with Carlos. How are you doing, Carlos? Pretty good, Ernest. How are you, man? Not too bad. Not too bad. Nice to see you again. I think I'm a lucky guy. I'm the only guy that gets to interview you. It's because of your nice wife. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I've done a few over the past year or so. You know. Right on. Um, so I wanted to, well, first of all, before I forget, um, you're going to be the interest of a book being written by a fellow Canuck, Sean Kelly. Um, you, you had a good talk with him about the book? Uh, I did do an a interview with him, but uh, um, I don't know what he what he's doing with the book. Um, I forgot what it was about now. It was it about guitar playing or something? I forget. Yeah, it was about the 80s of... and how he got his start into music, playing right. for Nelly Furtado right. and everybody. And he yeah. wanted to have some uh, rockers in the uh, video. And uh, he contacted me to see if I can contact you. And I felt so important. I was uh, able to be a uh, go-between. <laughs> so... He's going to give me a little bit of credit in the uh, in the in the uh, in the book um, opening, but in any event, that book I, I think is coming out um, next year, so we'll look out for that. Now, yeah. um, just one question: um, When I talked to you last, Carlos, with about with you were with Freak Show, and uh -huh. so you're 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 are you you're not touring with them? Is that correct? Uh, no, I told them when I did the record that I most likely would never tour with them because I, you know, I don't even was even into being in a band at that point yeah, uh, yeah. i don't mind, you know writing with people and recording with people but i don't know yeah. touring is a lot of work anymore it seems like yeah and you're you're kind of an la based guy like i mean back in the 80s and stuff with quiet riot and and, and that you traveled the world and so now you're more of a family yeah. guy you stay kind of close to home <laughs> um i gotta ask you something that i was talking to tony about it was incredible i didn't know this um Bang your head and no more booze. Now, um, was it fair to say the song was written because you guys had alcohol problems? <laughs> uh, I think no. the problem we had was running out of it. <laughs> we didn't have no money to buy more. <laughs> so, so tell the viewers what Tony told me um, about how uh, he wrote the song, or, or Tony, you tell us how the song was written and why. Well, um, we played a gig in Hollywood and we got invited to a party r to go right after the gig. So we went there and by the time we got there, the party was, it was already late in the evening and, and the booze was all gone at the party. And I was like going, what a drag, no more booze, you know, what a drag. And yet the next day I kind of started thinking, you know, that'd be kind of a good title for a song, you know? And, you know, I came up with a basic, riff for it and then carl's added uh, a piece of, of, his, of what he thought was uh, needed in there and it became what it is um, we just kept working on it and uh, the original version what a drag no more boost became what it is it's it, it was one of our more popular songs actually yeah and i can see why i mean that intro with riff like uh, you know i mean carlos would confirm it's it's not a technically hard you know it's not a malmsteen shrill but it's just no. got that uh, the right timing, you know, and, and it's just amazing. I just listened to the other day. I cannot believe it. I have a rock show uh, mm -hmm. channel, and I didn't even know that. I was I was blown away when I listened to it. Um, and your show, solo was unique in there. And and with the with the metal health version, um, have you realized like you know in the uh, middle of a song like that, uh, you got your riff, and then you have your trills and your little things. Um, that the uh, United Kingdom, their ambulance systems copied your guitar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that's how it went. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So um, I was wondering if you, well, you just got back from the UK at the Firefest uh, Festival. Uh, tell us about that, uh, both of you, with, her, with Hurricane. It was a lot of fun. We had a good turnout there, and the band played well. And, uh, you know, we were kind of worried about the sound at first. But uh, uh, when I went back and looked at a lot of the footage that people did with their phone, it looked sounded good, you know. Mm -hmm. We, uh, you know, the the on stage sound was a little distorted during the show, but during the yeah. sound check, better. But that's the way it always goes with live shows. Sometimes it sounds better at sound check than the actual show itself on stage. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, it could be. And anything. thinks it sounds good off sta off the stage and the, to the audience. You know. Yeah, it could be anything from that's barometric true. pressure outside to the people to the humidity to to anything. <laughs> so, um. 
when you guys are doing that, well, you everybody um would know um that are uh, Tony and Carlo Cabasso fans that um you're the new guitarist and well not new but you're um you're you're the current guitarist in Hurricane. Um, hmm. when you guys were doing that show, did you guys do any Snow or Choir Riot tunes just because of um your histories? We sure did. We did uh probably like four or five Choir Riot songs, two Snow songs, and uh, one Hurricane. Were, yeah, the rest were Hurricane songs. Okay, right on. Um, and I, I saw a picture on social media of uh, you and uh, Tony standing outside of a um, a studio, and I thought you guys were writing music together, but mm -hmm. as it turns out, Tony, tell us what that was about. I didn't see the well, picture, so I don't, I don't know what picture it was. I think the picture you're talking about was uh, when Carlos and I were... Uh, after rehearsal, right the next day, we left to go to England, and it was we we're oh, standing yeah. by the by, at the outside of the rehearsal studio. Yeah, that picture. Um, we haven't gotten together physically to write songs. We do it over the internet, which is the mm -hmm. way most people do it nowadays. Right. But, uh, it probably would be better if we could all be together when we're writing and do a pre-production or something like that for putting an album out. If if we end up doing that. Yeah. I'll put up the picture so people can see it. I, at first I was concerned because you guys look like you're in the rough area of LA. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rehearsal yeah. studio is what it is. Yeah, not a yeah. I, I think all of LA is a rough area. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell the tell the viewers who's currently in Hurricane now besides you and uh and then uh, Carlos Tony. It, oh Tony, okay. Okay, well we got uh Dan Schumann on vocals. Um, right. He's a guy from Australia, and uh, uh, we found him through Andy Freeman of Last in Line. He's one that recommended him because I'd called Andy Freeman to see if he could do some shows with us, and he was not available. And he highly recommended Dan to do the vocals, and he came in and he fit right in. He was really good. We were really impressed he's with him. He did his homework. And then we have Mike Hansen on drums. He's been with us for quite some time now, for at least. 12 to 15 years he's been you know on and off with the band um and you know we love him he's he's a you know great guy and great drummer and you know we just keep it going right on um and so uh carlos are, are you um writing any music for any new uh, uh hurricane album uh, you and tony or tony and carlos uh yes i am and yes we are we've already recorded two songs uh but like tony said just through the internet, not like a personal recording together, all of us together in a room, you know, Yeah. which I prefer myself uh, to do it that way. Cause it, uh, you get a lot more out of it that way. Cause everybody can throw in their two cents and it can become a better song. But the way we do it now is somebody writes the song and then sends it to somebody and they re-record it with all the drums and uh, you know, then use computer drums, erase the computer drums, have a real drummer do his parts and, it's a different process now, but do it yeah. like that. Yeah. We, we've already so, recorded two songs that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, you definitely prefer um you know being in the same vibe in the same room, right? It's more personal, it really is. Yeah. And uh, you get more out of it, I think, you know. When yeah, I agree, you do. It, it's you know, you need that pre production to get the songs tight and sound yeah. good, you know. It's hard to it's hard to, you know smash a guy up against the wall and tell him to get his shit straight uh you know online right yeah so, um yeah so what so oh you guys already have a show booked you guys are doing mark the mark and mindy cruise the monsters of rock in uh march correct yeah we are yeah, yeah my my wife booked that show for us so, you know she's she's managing the band right now and she's the one that booked that um, she called uh, Larry and, you know, got that going for us. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, we're spending a week on the ship, you know, with the band. And, you know, the it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of crazy lot of bands. With, yeah, a lot of people that we're friends with uh, in certain bands are going to be on the same cruise with us. So, so what's with the Cavasso brothers and having their wives wear the pants, wearing the manager's <laughs> pants? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just well, she, you know, my wife is very proactive, oh, and, okay. and she she get, gets things done. She's not afraid to make phone calls. She's not afraid to negotiate yeah. or whatever. You know, she she's she's 
has a lot of experience doing that kind of stuff with other businesses she's been in yeah. in the past. And I asked her, what do you know about the music business? And she goes, the music business is about people. I've been dealing yeah. with people all my life, you know, people, mm -hmm. you know, you learn how to deal with people and it's, it's the same thing. So it, it, there's no difference. It's a business just like any other business. And it's so a she, lot of work to manage too. It is. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, that, I don't profess to be a manager. That's for sure. I don't No, I don't. No, she, she has a lot of sleepless nights at times, you know, trying to deal with stuff and, and, you know, a lot of uh, phone calls come in the middle of the night, you know, things like yeah. that. Sorry about that. That was a, that was a missed dial. <laughs> so she's proactive and you guys are reactive. Right. <laughs> Fair to say. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, for me, Vicky just started helping me out in my business and she kind of likes it and she learned a lot through me and other people and she oh, yeah. does it. And I let her do it and whatever. You know, she's well, she been she's been kind of managing you for like since you got really managing together. me by helping me out. I would say yeah. we both to me, you know. Setting up like interviews and things sure. like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. She's just she's easy to get a hold of. I'm not a big phone guy. I don't pay a lot of attention to my phone. She does and uh, yeah, messages I'm, before I... I'm kind of the same way. I I don't even, I've got a cell phone. And you 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 need it now, but um, I yeah. I don't sit there and scroll on it. I really don't. Yeah. My girlfriend will say I'm on the computer all it the time. It takes a lot of I mean, time. It does. Oh man, it's just bad for the eyes. So um, I'd asked Tony earlier. So the Wikipedia says you guys were born in Mexico, but that's not true. You were you're from <laughs> your Mexican heritage, but it's uh, Georgia, correct? Correct. I was born in Atlanta, and my brother was born in Thomaston, Georgia. Oh, Thomaston. Don't know where that is. Yeah, it's, a <laughs> it's a small little town. Oh, really? Okay. Of Atlanta, about 70 miles south of Atlanta. Okay. And then you guys um, moved on to uh, move to the coast when you guys were about seven or eight? Or yeah. Um, well, actually, yeah, younger than I, I, was about, I was about three years old, 1960. Yeah, um, I was like five, somewhere around there, five years old. Okay. Five to six. And you originally started playing uh, guitar as well, uh, correct, uh, Tony? And then you. Uh, yeah, I, I started off playing drums, and then I always dabbled around with Carlos's guitar behind his back when he wasn't around. <laughs> and uh, you know, well, I, no, I, no, I, no. I love the instrument, and I, I, I wanted to play guitar. I wanted to be a, a guitar player as well, but the bass kind of fell into my lap, you know. And that's a different story in itself, you know, how it happened, you know. Well, you us. originally started playing saxophone. Well, originally, when I was in the fifth grade, I, I started mute my music by playing the saxophone. That's right. And, but and then, yeah, I, you I, know, I, I wanted to play rock and roll, roll, you know. And and at that point in the music history, sa the sax was more of a jazz instrument and, you know, big band instrument. It really wasn't uh, a rock and roll instrument. Now it, it's a rock and roll instrument, but back then and, it wasn't. And then Dad got us a, rented us a guitar and an amp and a drum set. He's yeah, like, yeah. He rented all that stuff for us. And, uh, you know, I always play the drums and Carl's always play the guitar and we would just jam in our room and we ended up, you know, jamming for years until we both moved out of my parents' house when we were in our late teens, early 20s. We both left home and moved into another house together where Carl's and I built a little rehearsal studio, a little recording studio. And uh, we started working with uh, Snow at the time. And before that, we were called Speed of Light. That was the name right. of our band, the Speed of Light. And uh, we changed it to Snow when we moved to uh, Newport Beach and built our studio. And we found uh, a drummer there, and we found uh, uh, singer Doug Sorry. Ellison there. And this, we were there for a couple of years before we moved to Arcadia. And that's where we found Stephen Quadros to play drums was because our drummer didn't want to go. He didn't want to move up to L.A. Uh -huh. So me, Doug, and Carlos, we rented a house in Arcadia and then we uh, found Stephen on uh, in Music Connection or one of those magazines like that we found Stephen and I think it was Carlson Stewart our manager yeah, we Stewart him, yeah. went and met with Stephen yeah and we invited him to come jam with us and uh, he did and it, it was like magic and we made a studio at that house too out of the yeah garage. yeah we, we built a studio we had a detached garage in the Demo backyard studio. and we built a studio in there and we recorded in there. We did a lot of recordings in there. Yeah. Um. So, when you guys are growing up, when did you guys um kind of think, okay, this is going to be my life, my career, music is going to be my career, 
Um, I know Carlos, obviously when uh, you joined quiet riot in that, you know, you hit solid gold with Dion Warwick, that was, right. that would probably be a moment where you thought, yeah, I think I can make a living doing this, but Tony, uh, what about you? When did you think that, Hey, I can do this for a living? Well, I, me and Carlos always had that same thought process. You know, we were together, I always share a room. We always talked about uh, being musicians, you know, professional musicians, making money and, and uh, making a living out of it. And uh, we, we really started to do that back in the snow days. And it just kind of elevated when uh, Carl uh, joined Quiet Riot mm -hmm. and I formed Hurricane. And, it, you know, we were actually making money, you know, playing music and traveling around and, you know, doing what every musician dreams of doing. So in that regard, I think that I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Yeah. And, and with um, that riff, um, you're still bringing in coin the way royalties right. work back then. Right. Like these days it's hard with Spotify, but I, I talked to a lot of um, musicians and they're still collecting royalties 40 years later. And it's, it's so silly, not silly. It's, it's unique because Canada it's, it's not even close to that. If you have a hit song, you're lucky to get paid, <laughs> but you guys still yeah. get the royalty checks bouncing in decades later. Yeah, I still get them. We are the companies that yeah. are working for us are pretty, you know, honest, thankfully, and uh, things are working out. So, right Thank on. You. Um, so what was that? The other thing I was gonna say. So you guys are doing the Monsters of Rock. Um, is um, are you guys planning on doing? If you do, even even if you don't release a full album, maybe an EP or a few singles. Uh, have you talked about doing some uh, hurricane shows on the uh, West Coast? Um, we'll see. You know, we're, you know, it, it's right now it's very difficult for us to get together because our drummer lives in Chicago and oh. uh, our singer lives in Vegas. But for oh. him coming to L.A. from Vegas is not that big of a deal. It's a three and a half hour drive. It's not so bad. Mm -hmm. But for Mikey to come in from Chicago, it's a lot harder you know, because he has a fly in and needs a place to stay and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he also want, want, wants to rent a car when he's here. Just depends on how long he's going to be here. Right. Um, but that that's what, you know, our biggest issue is right now. It's the logistics of getting our drummer here. And uh, that's why we doing it, everything on online right now with drum machines and all that kind of yeah. stuff. That, that's the main reason why. Otherwise, we probably would be in a rehearsal studio working out songs, you know. Right. Um, this this question is a little controversial, but it's, you know, it's not controversial to you guys. It's a, just a question. Um, with, um, you know, bands being brands like Motley Crue and everything, like you, you see it now. They're, they're run by management companies like, say, Def Leppard and stuff like that. They're always go, go, go. You know, Bruce Dickinson doesn't need any more money. But they're doing it as part of the band and the brand, right? So quite right, it's a smaller brand, and they're still touring. They've got different members and all of that sort. But then I saw something recent. I don't know if you've seen it. I think I talked to Vicky about it. I think Kelly Garney um, was in a band called Quite Right. Something recently. Have you heard about that? You kind of play on I words. I have not heard that. No. Okay. Well, Kelly Garney um, was the original bass player for Quiet Riot. Yeah. Yeah. Back at, before Rudy joined. Right. Yeah. No, that's what I'm kind of saying is. Um, there's there's still a lot of different branches um, on that um, tree trunk, I guess, uh, to say. Yeah, it so, to be. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just about, uh, I guess, uh, it's just about <laughs> get myself shot. <laughs> um, speaking of being shot, what did you, when you guys heard about Jakey e. Lee being shot, what the fuck? It was shocking. Um, actually, we were over doing that fire fest when I heard about oh, it. Oh, so okay. We yeah i heard about that too he apparently he was walking his dog really late at yeah. night or early in the morning yeah. or something and he came across some some thieves or something and he got in a little confrontation with him they shot him that's what i read yeah you know? it's, it's kind of that yeah for sure i mean the three four times he's i mean god bless him he's he's alive and uh we're just glad he's okay right yeah yeah well, he's gonna make a recovery but it's still gonna take him a while yeah it's just insane i mean like i was thinking where he would be walking his dog would probably uh, pretty predominantly actually no I did see a picture of a local newscaster video footage of the street that it was done and I'm like geez that's a nice little that's a nice uh, suburb suburban neighborhood I mean but it goes to show you it doesn't matter where you are nowhere is safe anymore it seems like you know no um is Vicky around I'm gonna bring her on and um she sure is. 
Everybody, Vicky Cavasso, come on down. <laughs> hey, Vicky, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Hi, Vicky. <laughs> oh, by the way, nobody comment, com commented on my nice blouse, my shirt. Oh, yeah, your blouse. <laughs> yeah, your head blouse. I, my, my buddy had, I'll tell you a little funny story. Nice guy, so I won't say his name, but we were in Traverse City, Michigan, and we were shopping one uh, about 20 years ago, and I had some money, and he didn't really have much. So we were in, a, I think, a freaking American Eagle. I said, I'll buy you a couple shirts, man. And we're going out tonight. We're going to go out and party. And he's like, I don't know. I don't like this top. I'm like, well, what? He said, I don't like this top. I said, it's, it's a shirt. He goes, no, it's sure. a top. It's, 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 it's same thing. I said, no, your sisters wear tops. That's a shirt. So yeah. uh, anyway. <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah. So thanks for the shirt, Vicky. Um, bang your head apparel. Now tell us about, uh, you might have a, a bit of a super sale for the next 24 hours on the merch and tell us about um, what products people can buy and how sore we're going to make Carlos's hand for signing things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what okay. do you got now? All right. I'm going to start out with um, this Carlos shirt. This the first merch that came out way back this when. It's a really yeah. cool one. That's it? the first shirt that we came up with. This one. This oh, is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. This is Gorgeous. Started. <laughs> this one started it all so that was the first one that's the carlo shirt and the next the newest one we have here is the bangerhead records shirt right here oh wow yeah yeah, nice yeah. we'll get you one of those too if you like yeah yeah I yeah, these. yeah. this is anyway. hey everybody this is recorded he can't <laughs> he's gonna send it <laughs> just fucking yeah. and the most recent one that i just came out with my Rock girl shirt team. Rocky Queens uh, tank top. I also have a men's one too as well. It's got the Egyptian thing on there. Rock and Queen. No, that's there. cool. Like I like the Rock and Queen. I mean, um, um, when I first saw it, I won't say what social media you have that on. I don't want a bunch of people sending you a bunch of uh, social media stuff. But um, when did you come up with Rock and Queen? Oh, Rock and Queen came out like way back when. Oh gosh, like two thousand and five. I finally just recently uh, mm -hmm. trademarked it, so I have that. Taking care of, so I could just move forward and do whatever I want with this. Yeah, that probably dates back to two thousand three or four or something. Yeah, like. this is before I met him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, there you and, go. Uh, yeah, so Bangerhead came out in twenty fifteen, so I'm really happy. And then she also it. sells jewelry and clothing. Oh yeah, you? no, I've I've Women's looked at the website. There's like gorgeous stuff on there. Everybody, make sure you get all that stuff. I mean, they're they're paying off lawyers. They're they're having some troubles financially. And also, there's no. I'm shaking. I'm shaking my head, guys. I was shaking my head. <laughs> I was joking. You guys both look like I was serious. Now I'm joking. Everybody knows. <laughs> okay. And then uh, we've got the snow CD here. Yeah, yeah. Double CD it's, in here. Yeah, stuff from me and my brother's first band, Snow. Yeah. Which uh, the first band we started writing originals and. And actually, the song "No More Booze" is on here. Yeah, the, the original here. version of "Banger" had "No More Booze" is on that CD. Exactly. Right. Live at Hollywood. And, uh, okay. And right on. Bangerhead.us will be the site if you guys want to make yeah. a purchase. Yeah. Um, and so will Carlos uh, sign anything? Like if the orders come in before, say, tomorrow night at midnight? I sure will. Yeah. If she, um, go ahead and tell him. Yeah. So any purchase uh, made during watching this interview here, and you could just. Uh, do the checkout, buy an out, leave a request if you want Carlos to sign anything, any item yeah. off the website. Just make sure you uh, leave me a note at the checkout, and the code will be Border Rock City 1114 at the note at checkout. You mean Border uh, City Rock Talk? Border City. It's yeah. Is that it's Border Border Rock City? No. 1114. That's not him. No. What's his? Border City Rock Talk. Or, that's his show, Border City Rock Talk. Yeah, that's what I meant. For, yeah, yeah, for his. Border City Rock Talk, 1114. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank oh, you okay, the date. <laughs> well, well, the, how about 1115? Because it won't go published until tomorrow because it's recorded. That's, okay, that's, that's, fine, that's, yeah. that's totally that's fine. fine. Yeah, so they could just put that stuck out so they know it's coming from your interview. And okay. call and sign yeah. any one of those purchases. Right items. on. Right on. Well, I'd like to thank uh, the, the, the Cavazos family for joining me tonight. <laughs> Whole family. Thank you for having, um, thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Tony, I want to ask you a question. Um, favorite Canadian band or musician? 
Did you still? Oh, man. There's crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear Being it? Being a what now? The favorite Canadian band, or because this? Oh, is I like favorite. Rush. Okay, you're you're. But Rush was player. always one of my. I've always, I still like Geddy Lee's one of my all time favorite bass players. So. Did you see him at the S Festival? Um, no, but I did see him at the Forum. You know, okay. many years ago, I saw him. Right on. And so, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? No. The opposite of what? Unsubscribe. Of unsubscribe is subscribe. Yeah, everybody do as the uh, rocker Tony Cavasso says and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> and, and Carlos, <laughs> I think I asked you this cliche question before about the Canadian, uh, your favorite Canadian uh, musician. So I'll ask Vicky, what's your favorite Canadian band or artist? Favorite Canadian band? Triumph. You like Triumph? Yeah, I like you? Triumph. They're really good. Yeah, I love them. Right they, on. In, in fact, in, on the Bill of Us Festival, Never. and I watched it when I was 12 years old. Loved it. Wow. Great <laughs> band. Right on. And Carlos again, who's your favorite? Um, I got to say, uh, uh, God, Rush, probably. Okay. But their they're Lover Boy's great, and, and yeah. Triumph is great. There's a lot of great Canadian bands up there. You Canadian, know, really yeah. Uh, yeah. Killer Dwarfs is one of my favorites. Yeah, Killer uh, they're, Dwarfs, yeah. They're, they're yeah. kind of unsung. Oh, who's going to be on this cruise with you guys? What other bands? Oh, God, there's lots of bands, but I know uh, Chris Holmes, uh, Mean Man, is going to be on it, and he's a good friend of mine. And uh, Chris, oh, God, I don't even know. I haven't looked at the – I know there's hundreds, whatever it is. You, you can probably go online and see the lineup. I think yeah, there's I'm like gonna, 40 bands. Yeah, it's got right, yeah, I'm going to definitely check that out for sure. So – um yeah so what's the opposite of unsubscribe both of you subscribe please vicky. subscribe now vicky 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 right. <laughs> i'm here <laughs> everybody does is the cavasso family uh, says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews i'll put links to uh bang your head merch apparel at the, at the bottom i'll put uh links to hurricane and everything at the bottom i'll put links to um a couple of those snow songs and uh like once again, thank you guys for joining me. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ernest. It was awesome. awesome. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I'll let it